I'm Doug Boyle for Sales Labs. This afternoon we have a gentleman whose career spans sales, sales management, regional management, currently is serving as CEO. This is his third opportunity as CEO for three different companies in three different industries. Phil Padfield has a wealth of knowledge, experience, and common sense, which has distinguished him throughout his career. Welcome, Phil. Thanks, Doug. Phil, we're going to talk about uh, our first topic, which is the first 100 days of a sales manager's career. How important is that in, in the overall career, to nail the first 100 days? It, it's vital. It, it really is. The, the, it's incredibly hard to recover from a, a, a misstep in the first 100 days, um, primarily because it, you, it's all about s establishing trust with the, you know, the people around you, whether it's mm. the customers or your employees or whatever else. Right. And it starts with the, you know, the countdown period. So you know, when I'm preparing for a new CEO opportunity, you know, I'll hopefully have you know, a month or so before I join the business. This is post all the, you, you know, the negotiations and the recruitment sort of phase, but this is once you start, you, you've signed the contract, you're gonna join in a couple of months time, then use that countdown period to really get inside what's happening within the business and look at the core things within the business. And those are the core value drivers. And those aren't just the economic metrics, but the core value drivers are really down to the people and what their motivations are. If you can get that right in the, in the countdown period, then there's a better chance of getting the, you know, the assessment period right, then you can get the alignment period right and the setting the expectations right. And you've got that right, then you'll hit your number at day 100 and people will start to, to, to begin to trust you. I'd like you to reflect for a moment on the basic areas that a sales manager needs to divide his time amongst. Things like coaching the reps, going on sales calls, reviewing deals, analyzing the pipeline, and perhaps even how does a good sales manager interact with other departments to make sure that the whole process flows. I think the most important thing to do is get out on sales calls as soon as possible. There's a danger that you may want to wait before you go on sales calls so you don't do any damage. But on the other hand, if you go out on sales calls early on, nobody really expects you to be adding value, certainly around the product part of your offerings, but they will expect some kind of opinion from you. Getting out on sales calls is a fantastic opportunity to you know, review and prepare for meetings with customers, to really understand how your salespeople are you're planning, and how are they thinking, and more importantly, to understand what their motivations are, what's really driving them, because that actually is the key to managing a successful sales team. Part of it comes down to the you getting, trying to get the balance right in the early days between this natural urge to be action-oriented and do things, and the need to assess what's happening within the sales team, within the market, within the customer base, and most importantly, in this situation, within the pipeline. So you do have to, I believe, make clear to your senior management that there has to be a period of assessment. And to a degree, you need to involve your own senior management in that period of assessment. Now, I think everybody's familiar with a situation where a new guy comes into a territory, he'll assess the pipeline, and he'll go back and report back to his management that the pipeline is, is completely empty and there's this sort of game that goes on uh, however you know there's a bit of reality on both sides that there's often there are nuggets within the pipeline he has to find those and more often there will be things which are spurious within the pipeline otherwise you know he wouldn't have replaced somebody to manage that team or typically wouldn't have replaced uh, ma replaced somebody so there has to be that period of assessment once the period of assessment is complete he or she will need to to, to go to their senior managers with a realistic assessment of what he's inherited, both in terms of the capability of the salespeople and the pipeline, and set expectations. Because you have to negotiate expectations with your senior management, otherwise, as you say, you'll be trying to achieve something which is actually not possible. Or you'll be driven to what we in the sales business call unnatural acts, which is you know, typically about trying to force customers to buy things they don't actually want, and that will come back and bite you later. So you have to then set those expectations. However, once you've set those expectations, be sure that you meet those expectations because that's the, the, the whole process of building confidence 
in the team, i.e. the team's confidence in you and your ability to negotiate the right um, targets for them. And of course, it's, it's a major step in, in building confidence in your senior management that you're the guy who can actually make it happen. Thank you.